here, I wanted to address a question that came up on the forum. And this wasn't exactly the question, but that question led me to want to do this. So yesterday, when we talked about the convertible, convertible, and we discussed a forward moving pulse and a back moving pulse, okay, or a wave. Okay, so the car is moving in this direction, and there's a pulse or a little wavelet. Uh, that's emitted and it's moving in this direction and I just simply stated well as seen from the car the speed of this thing is s plus v as seen from And by the way, the speed of this thing, that's minus V. Okay. I want to, I mean, this may have caused confusion for some of you, so I want to, for example, discuss this. I want to discuss this thing. So first thing, First, so the question uh, in the forum was, why don't we use Galilean velocity transformation? Well, we are using Galilean velocity transformation. That's where these come from. So let me explain how. It's not, uh, you don't see how this is an example of Galilean velocity transformation. So for example, uh, so first of all, Galilean velocity transformation is a velocity transformation. Remember this scenario, S and S prime? S prime is moving with speed V. And uh, the transformation was that, you know, there's some, some, something moving like a bird flying, that the bird's velocity as seen from this frame, U, equals the bird's velocity as seen from this frame, U prime plus V. I want to emphasize, these are velocities. In fact, in 2D or in 3D, you just put arrows over these. And boom, you get yourself a nice three-dimensional Galilean velocity transformation. In 1D, well, there's no sense of putting arrows, but the vectorial aspect of things is contained in the sign, S-I-G-N, of these things. Okay, so going back to here, we have to choose the coordinate, a, coordinate, coordinate axis. Here's the x coordinate. It's positive going that way, it's, right? So, and so, so if, if something is moving in that direction, it has a positive velocity. And if something is moving in the negative x direction, it will have negative, uh, negative uh, velocity. Now, how do we apply this to this? So u would be the velocity of the, I'm focusing on the back moving pulse for now, of the back moving pulse uh, as seen from the ground or air. Why or air? Because we're assuming air is still relative to the ground. Okay. And what is this? This is the velocity of the uh, uh, back moving pulse, which is what we want. As seen from the R. So what we want is this. So u prime equals u minus v. Now, u is the velocity of the back moving uh, pulse as seen from the ground or air. What is it? It's minus s. Minus, because it's moving to the left in the negative x direction. 
on S because S is the speed of sound, 340 meters per second. It's uh, defined to be a positive one. Okay, uh, equals minus S. So the minus moves in the negative X direction. So therefore, the velocity of the back moving pulse as seen from the car equals minus s minus c. Okay? And so the speed of the back moving pulse as seen from the car is the absolute value of minus s minus v. And a v is the velocity of the car as seen from the ground. Okay? And that's uh, assumed to be a positive quantity, assumed uh, that car is moving in the positive x direction. That's how we define the x direction, positive x direction, the direction in which the car is moving. Okay, so velocity of the car is plus V or just a V. Okay. Uh, so this is therefore S plus a V. Both of these are defined to be positive. And a similar argument would apply to, uh, to the front moving pulse. Okay, so I just wanted to digest this. Uh, just one comment I, I guess I want to make. Remember, velocity is to displacement is what speed is to distance. So velocity times interval of time equals the displacement, which could be positive or negative. Speed times interval of time equals the distance, which is always positive. Okay? Uh, this is just a side remark that I thought might be useful.